to give you some broad brush overview of what MATLAB is and, and what it can do and then start having you guys do some very simple things and each Wednesday we'll get a little more sophisticated in the kind of things that we're trying to do. Okay. So here's what we're going to cover. I'll talk a little bit about MATLAB and so-called toolboxes. These are add-ons which I'll talk about. How to get help, right, which is important because if you don't know what to do, you need help. Um, then we'll talk a little bit about, I'll show you how to plot things, which is very simple in MATLAB. And then I'll have you do a little exercise thing just to get you actually using MATLAB instead of watching me use it. Okay. So I stole these um, quotes from the math. So MathWorks is the company that makes MATLAB. I think they're based in Cambridge, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and so MATLAB, if you, uh, you know, I could read this to you, but it's a, it's a very easy way to do scientific computing is the main point, okay? You may have heard of other languages like C and C++ and Fortran and things like this, which I grew up using. But, um, and they're still good for many things, but they're not easy to use. So MATLAB is much easier to get something running quickly of reasonable complexity, okay? Um, and so to use MATLAB, we're going to learn that we're going to use a lot of built-in capabilities of MATLAB. So if we want to solve equations, it's not a matter of you writing a piece of code that solves equations. It's a matter of you learning how to use the code that MATLAB has to solve equations, okay? Um, so there's these toolboxes. <coughs> part of the MathWorks business model. So they sell MATLAB itself and then they send all these additional toolboxes. If you go to the website, you'll see they have about 50 of them. They do statistics, signal processing, control, optimization, everything that you can imagine. Okay? The one toolbox you need in this class, so in other words, if you have MATLAB, you need one additional thing, which is the statistics toolbox. Okay? That's what we're going to use in the first third of the course. If you don't have that, there'll be many... How do you know you don't have something? you issue a command and it says, I've never heard of that command. <laughs> okay, if you do that, that means it doesn't think you have the toolbox that's associated with that. And uh, you need to find it somehow. All right, and so I'm not going to click on this, but you could go to MathWorks and it describes MATLAB has a bunch of help and things like that. Okay. <clears throat> um, I'm going to launch MATLAB in a second, but when you, when you do, it depends on what version. I think I run an old version because I'm not a student and therefore I have, the old version had a different license thing. So the current version, you have to be on a UMass, you have to be on a UMass network in order for it to run. So I tend to run the old version because then I can run it at home. And so yours might look slightly different than this, but it looks, it should look pretty similar. And so if we look at this, I think this is version 2011, you guys will have version 2014. All right, so when you open up MATLAB, oh, you get three main windows here. This, this window here is the main one. This is where you issue commands, okay? This is where you do calculations. This little double whatever that's called <laughs> is the MATLAB prompt, we call it. So when I say type in a command at the prompt, I mean type in something like that, like that command there. That command there solves sets of linear algebraic equations. You'll learn that, okay? Over here are a bunch of files that are in the directory, right? This is Windows. At least that's the version I have. And so I have this up here set to a, a directory called um, courses, right? And that's where all the MATLAB codes I've written for all the courses I teach. And that's, all those codes are over here, okay? So at the, when you go, when you open MATLAB, um, it'll take you to some default. I don't know what the default will be for you, but you're not liable to have much over here because you haven't written many codes, okay? <clears throat> As part of the course, um, I will at some point, probably soon, especially if you remind me. So if I ever say I'm going to do something, that's code for send me an email to ask me to do what I just said, okay, because I won't remember. But I can provide, I have to be a little careful because I don't want to provide all the codes because some of the codes are things you're supposed to do in the, you know, as part of the recitation section. If I give it to you, you won't do it. But I want, I'll provide lots of these codes as we go through the course so you can see how they're actually used and built. Anyway, this is where you issue the command. These are all MATLAB files over here of different kinds. Over here is something called the workspace. These are all the variables that you've created as part of doing these calculations. You can see it. I divine something called A, B, and I calculate something called X, and you see they're listed over here. Okay? That means these things are available for you to work with in the so-called workspace here. Okay? And then finally here is just a bunch of old commands. These are all the commands I've issued. Well, and you can scroll up. so. It, if you forget a command, or I, I tend to cut and paste a lot because I can't remember it, um, things like that. So anyway, that's what it'll look like. And when you, so here I have MATLAB down here. If I click on this thing, it will 
open up. You can see I'm running version actually 2010. Okay, and it looks like that. Just, okay, and if you don't, one of the most common problems is people aren't in the right directory. So they have something they're trying to run, but they're not in the right place to run it. <laughs> okay, so y you know, like any Windows application, you can change things up here, right? You can find, you can go to any directory you want. So I happen to want to go to this directory that I go to all the time. Um, called courses, right? And that's the one I just showed you. And it's got all these codes, MATLAB files that are, oh, explained to you in due time. Okay? And so this is where we're going to do all the, all the calculations. And I'll, I'll come back to this in just a moment. All right. So these are a bunch of commands. Okay? These are commands that help you identify what variables and what's the characteristics of things in the workspace. Okay? So um, I tend to just look in the upper right-hand corner to see what the variables are, but you can type the command who, and then it would la it'll list all the variables that you've created. Okay, so I guess I have to create something. Let me see. I don't like to really create things. <laughs> I'm lazy. So by the way, you can use if you've issued a command in the past, you can use the up and down arrows to scroll back through the commands you've done in the past, which is you know, which beats having, so let's say I want to change one number in X instead of, you know, typing the whole thing over again, I can just pull it back up, change the one number, hit return, and then I've got a new, new X there. So there's a, there's a Y, that looks cool. Okay, so you see now if I type, so you don't know what I'm doing, that's fine, but if I type this command who, it'll say I have, t you have two variables in the workspace, they're called X and YP, okay? If you want more details about the variables, which you probably don't at this point, um, you can type whose. This will tell you, is the thing a scalar or a vector or a matrix, as we'll be talking about? Okay, it'll tell you something about the dimension of the thing and what its characteristics are. If you don't like a variable, you can issue this command. Okay, that, that removes that. You see, the YP just disappeared. I said I removed it by clearing it. Be careful of this command. That clears everything. Okay, so if you've done a lot of work and you clear it, you've lost it all. So you probably want to avoid that if possible. Sometimes I get to a point where weird stuff is happening. It's kind of like rebooting, right? If, you, if your phone starts misbehaving, or your TV or your computer, the first option is, at least mine, is reboot, right? So Claire's like reboot. Just get everything out of the workspace and start over, okay? So there's different commands here. Again, up here is where you want to change to different directories. You can do it with commands, as I show here, but you don't really need to, okay? So, if, you know, <clears throat> to be honest, of these commands, I probably use half of them on a routine basis, and I don't use, for example, change CD for change working directory, because I do it at the top in the pull-down menu. Why would I issue a command when I can do it with the menu? But, you know, so it's, it, the commands are listed, though. Okay. <clears throat> Let's say you need help, okay? So, for example, you say, um, Boy, I'd really like to solve a set of linear algebraic equations. I wonder how you do it in MATLAB. Well, first of all, if you type this command, you will get more help than you ever hoped for. <laughs> okay? um, it just dumps everything. You, and you can also see that these are all things that MATLAB, these are mostly toolboxes, and you can see um, sometimes you have them and sometimes you don't. So this is, becomes a difficult, you know, it's like anything else when you're, if you want to do something, you guys have used Excel, right? And you've maybe used functions in Excel. If you know what the function is called and how to use it, it's easy. If you don't, you like Google it. That's what I would do. Okay. So I don't know if my, listening to some music there. Um, so if I didn't know how to solve linear equations, I, I, I personally just go to Google. Linear algebraic cheat sheet. That's disturbing. All right, linear algebraic equations, whoops, mat, and I get lazy. Okay, MATLAB. Ah, see, and then, then I find this. It's, it's the MathWorks website, right? It keeps you from having to figure out how to navigate all these different sub-help menus because you don't really know where to go, right? So I just use, I always just go to Google right away and then I get, I get to the place I want right away. Now, you don't need to use this command now, and you don't know what it means, but the point is there's um, there's enormous amount of MATLAB stuff available, okay, for anything that you might be interested in doing. So, I tell you here in the lecture notes that 
should you choose to... <clears throat> Like if you, know, if you know what the command is and forget how to use it. So the command I was talking about is called linsolve. And if I know that, then I can issue this command, okay? Then it tells me often a lot more than I'd like to know about that particular command. That command solves linear algebraic equations. We'll be co covering it soon. The problem is if you don't know what function does what you want, you don't know what to say help blank, okay? then it's better just to Google, and you can, you can find the answer just like I did. All right? Okay. So we're starting at a very rudimentary stage. Let's say that you had created things in MATLAB, <coughs> which I'll show you in a minute, and you'd like to just plot them. Right? So I assume you guys now, you take data or results into Excel, right? And you plot, plot them in Excel and print plots out from Excel or what have you. Um, so you can do all this in MATLAB. Actually, MATLAB makes nicer plots in my opinion, but... So these are, these are all the commands. I'm going to show you some of these. So plot, me, plot x, y means plot x versus y. x and y can be two vectors, right? If you're going to plot two things versus each other, you need various x values and various y values. They're called vectors, okay? Which I'll show you in a minute. This will create an x versus y plot of y values versus x, okay? Hold means you want to plot, hold means that when you've created a plot and you issue the command hold, it means I want to plot more on that same plot that I've already created, okay? Otherwise, it'll, each time you plot something, it'll wipe out what you had before and write the new thing. So if you want to plot multiple lines on a plot, you have to put hold. If you want to create you know, a cool thing that has like four subplots, you can use the subplot command. Instead of four separate plots, you can put s four subplots in a single, uh, single page. Okay? The command figure creates a new figure window, which I'll show you in a minute, where you can plot things. Okay? This command, these two commands here, x limit and y limit, just scale the x and y. So when you plot something, MATLAB gives you some default scaling based on the data you've plotted. And if you don't like it, you can rescale the axes. That's all that does. Rescale the x-axis and y-axis. Okay. And then if you're a good person, you'll label your figures. Okay. You maybe give it a title, but you'll definitely label the axes. <laughs> like what are you plotting? And you'll hopefully give it units, right? Because we're usually interested in what the units of the things are. And if you plot more than one line on a single plot, you can use this legend command to, um, where'd my thing go? To uh, give names to the, to the different lines, okay? So this is all a bit um, nebulous at this point. So let me, let me show you an example right here, okay? So you got two functions here. I call the functions y1 and y2. And what we wanna do is create, all we wanna do is create plots of these two functions, okay? I want, to I want to plot y1 versus x and y2 versus x, okay? So to do this in MATLAB, first of all, I have to create a series of values x, and then I have to calculate a series of values y1 and y2 for those values of x, right? <clears throat> so this first command here. So I'm going to commonly do this because I'm notoriously lazy. I'm going to cut from here and paste into here. I hope you won't hate me for this. Okay? All right. So, first of all, one of the most important things in MATLAB, you see the semicolon? Semicolon means you don't want it to print to the screen. If you remove the semicolon, it'll print to the screen. Okay? Um, sometimes you want to make sure you did what you want to do. Most times you're confident and don't want to see the results. So, you usually use a semicolon. Okay? So, what does that command do? That command says, I want to create a series of value of x, okay? I want the first value to be 0.1, I want the last value to be 10, and I want them to be separated by 0.1 units. So it's 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, all the way up to 10, okay? There's 100 values, okay? Right, because if you start at 0 0.1 and go by increments of 0 0.1 up to 10, there's 100 of them, okay? So this creates, why do I create so many values of x? Because I want a nice smooth plot, right? If I create three values of x and plot versus y, it'll, it'll look like this. Because it's going to connect the things with points, right? You don't want a plot that looks like that. So you generate lots of x values. So when you plot the y, it'll look nice and smooth. Okay? All right. So now I've got the x created. Now I have to, now I have to calculate the y. Okay? So let me show you how to do that. I'm doing the first function, y1. They have the same form, but they're a little different, okay? All right, so what does this command do? Well, if you look at the function, 
which I, I guess I should write on the board. Of course, it, it was y1 equals, I guess, 7x over 0 0.6 plus x, I believe was the function. That's what I calculated at least. Okay, that's the function I want to calculate. So you see what I've done in MATLAB here is I call something y1. You can call that anything you want. You know, I call it y1 because I called it y1 there. You could call it Tony. You know, and then you'd create a series of answers called Tony. All right. So this says t take x and multiply times 7. That's that part there. Divide by 0 0.6 plus x there. Don't print to the screen because what it's going to do, and I'm going to explain this in a minute, it's, it, it's going to create 100 values of y1 that correspond to the 100 values of x. Right? So it's creating big vectors of values. So, right, x is a vector. Its first component is 0 0.1, its second component is 0 0.2, and it goes all the way down to 10. It's 100 elements long. Okay, yeah? Why do you have a dot after that? That's what I'm going to explain in a minute. <laughs> the dot's critical. <laughs> All right, um, and now I'm creating a vector y1 that has corresponding values. So the first value is this function evaluated at x equals 0 0.1. I don't know what it is, but I could find out. I'll show you in a minute, okay? And so I'm creating 100 values of y1 that correspond to the 100 values of x. So and then I'm going to plot x versus y, okay? Now, the question came up, what's this dot for, okay? In MATLAB, all calculations are assumed to be performed on, which you don't understand fully at this point, or maybe at all, on matrices and vectors. So if you don't put this dot here, okay, what I'm telling MATLAB is by putting the dot there is please do this calculation element by element. Take each element of x and, and calculate, use that equation to calculate an element of y, okay? Mostly, usually what MATLAB wants to do is take the whole vector x and do a calculation on it at one time. If you don't use the dot, you'll get something that looks like this. Jeez, what, what happened? <laughs> it created a single value. Fascinating. I have, to, I have to think about what it did, but that's not what we wanted it to do. So you put a dot here, it says, please do the calculation element by element, okay? And so, now, for example, if I wanted to see what value corresponds to x equals 0 0.1, that's the first element, right? You can, you can issue this command. That says, please tell me what the first element of x is. It ends up being 0 0.1, I hope, right? If you want to find out what the corresponding value of y is, then you can issue that command. Yeah? If there are two x's in your equation, why did you put the period after the first x? Actually, I'm putting it after the divide. I'm putting it in front of the divide sign. Okay. Yeah. So the key thing is that I'm telling it, do this division element by element. That's why there's a dot there. Right. Yeah. Okay, so if you were to evaluate this function at point 0.1, you'd see it comes out to be 1. Okay? And you can do all kinds of things by, you know, so for example, if you wanted to know what's the, that says, what do you want, what are the elements 10 through 20 of, the, of y1, okay? I don't usually like it printed out that way. So if you do this thing, it's called the transpose, we'll learn about this, little, then it prints, I like it like that, it looks better, okay? So something prints out sideways and you don't like it, just put, the, put that little thing on and it'll print like a column, it looks more convenient, okay? <coughs> all right, so now if we wanna plot, I think I'll just copy all these commands because I'm super lazy. So first of all, you can do the same thing for y2. I did it for y1, just plot the other function there. Created a vec vector y2. And then you can issue these commands, which I'll do it, and then I'll explain them to you. Yeah, it gets angry. It gets angry because it doesn't, it doesn't want that thing that I copied from the slide. So this isn't always a great idea. Shut up. Talking to the computer. Keeps beeping at me. All right. So wh what did I do? I tried to issue this. It's a little sloppy. I issued this series of commands. First of all, I said plot. Okay, I issued this plot command. So if I'm saying, please plot two lines. The first one is x versus y1, and the second one is x versus y2. Okay? 
that creates those two lines. MATLAB picks the scale okay, and picks the colors of the line. You can change color of the line. You can do lots of things if you want. Okay? Then I say, please label the x-axis to say x. Please label the y-axis to say y. And because I don't know which line corresponds to which function, but I know I plotted y1 first and y2 second, you issue this command. This, you have to issue this legend command in the same order you did the plot. You say, I plotted y1 first, y2 second, so I issue this. This way I can tell the function y1 from the function y2. Okay? And so, ideally, since it's really boring to see me do this, you just do the same thing and you, should, you shouldn't be having any trouble, I hope, doing this. Okay? All right. <coughs> so, that's how we can plot a function, easy enough. And like I said, if we, here's the function I plotted, if we decided you know, I'd really rather the, um, where the plot command go? I'd really rather the second line be red, then you can do like, you know, how do I know to do all this? Because I've done it many times before. Or I could do help plot, right? If it had help plot, it would spit out like five pages of description of all the things you can do with the plot command, okay? This is going to make the w one line red. And this doesn't make much sense, but this will, instead of making a solid line, that, that'll make every, little X's, okay? So I should get one solid red line and one line, I'm not sure what color, but it'll have X's instead of a line. So, so you can change, change things around, change the symbol, change the solid line to a symbol, change the color, whatever you want. All right? Okay. You can see, though, once I replot it, I lost the x and y, <laughs> right? Because every time you replot, it redoes the figure. So if I wanted to label it, I'd have to do it again. I use these, I use these things like crazy, the up and down arrow, because I never want to type, because I hate typing. Okay. So there you go. All right? Now let's say you wanted to plot the same two results, but instead of y1 and y2 on the same plot, you wanted a plot where y1 was plotted versus x and lower was y2 versus x. You can use the subplot command. And that's this one right <coughs> here. Okay, I guess I shouldn't. Let's see if I have the wherewithal to do it myself without copying. So first I'm going to close that because I don't want to do it. Now if I wanted to save that one, which I probably should have, but you, you can always do figure. See, that opens up a new page for plotting. So if you wanted to keep the one you just did and do another one, you can issue figure. It'll open up a new window to generate a new plot. Okay. So let me refresh my memory here. Okay. So if you do this, and then you look over here, you see, it's done this. So what you're telling it now is I want to create a plot. This plot is actually going to have two subplots. Okay? This could be 100. They'd be really small. Um, and I'm telling you what the one in the first column and the f first row and first column is, basically. Okay? So, if, for example, you could plot, you know, three plots on top of each other, you could do one, two, three, four. You can do anything you want with this command. So this just says, I want two plots on top of each other and I'm doing the first one. So as long as this is active, everything I do is going to go in this little window here. Okay? So I might, for example, plot um, x versus y1 there. And then I might label that. And I might do, the, do this. And then you see I've done this. I've plotted x versus y1 on the plot at the top. Okay. And now if I want to do the same thing for y2, let me make sure I don't screw this up because I don't feel like doing it again. I can issue this subplot command. Where to go? With the two there. So that says um, I want to plot one below. And then I can do the same stuff. This is how. I I'm big on editing. Okay, this is all in the notes, and if you do that, then you get that. Okay, so you, know, you can plot them on the same plot, you can plot them on different plots. You know, I've created plots; it's not hard. You could have ten different little subplots on one big plot. You know, no, no problem. All right. So, 
now we've come to your, your task, I believe. I just have to introduce it real quick. So here's an equation I pulled off the web. Um, so this is a differential equation which you guys don't know about, but all you actually need to know is the solution to the differential equation, but I thought I'd explain where the solution came from. So this is a very simple equation that, that describes population growth. It could be like populations of, of human beings or it could be populations of microbial cells. <laughs> so it's a differential equation. So n is the number of cells, k here is the maximum number. Hopefully you can see that when n equals k, the right hand side goes to zero. That means n won't change anymore after that point, so that's as high as you can get. R is some rate, right? The bigger R is, the faster you'll get to K. Okay. So you can non-dimensionalize this. I don't know if you guys have seen this. I guess you haven't taken transport, but it's convenient instead of writing the equation in terms of N to write it in terms of N divided by K. Okay. So it's just a transformation. It, that takes the equation, converts it into this. And one thing, if you don't know already about, you've only had like, what, one day of differential equations, so you might may up, be up to speed yet, but if I want to solve this differential equation, so what does it mean by solve it? Well, you can see, I want to know how x depends on time. That's, was, that's what I mean by the solution. x is the dependent variable, t is the independent variable. I have to tell you what I'm starting at, right? I, you can't tell me what x is going to be in the future if I don't tell you where x starts. It's kind of reasonable, right? So I'm telling you the initial value of x is something x naught. This is some number, 100, whatever, okay? Now it ends up you can solve this equation analytically and that's the solution. I'm just telling you, okay? I'm not trying to solve it. That's not what I'm trying to do. So this is, the, this is what I want you to plot, okay? I want you to plot this equation here. Um, so I'm telling you, plot it for be, be, between t equal 0 and 10. Like, remember the previous equation, we did x between 0 and 10. So you're going to need to create some vector of t values, because that's the independent variable. Use the value x naught equals 0 0.1, and then generate this plot for three values of r. Okay, so it's just like the problem I gave you. It's a different function, right? But the idea here, and I've actually been really nice, I think. I've showed you how to, how to calculate um, a value x given a, val a set of values t. Let me be more clear. <coughs> if you create a vector of t values, this equation will compute a vector of x values, okay? It depends on what you specify r to be and what you specify x not to be, okay? Right, so if I were you, I, w I mean, when I did it, which I have the solution, but I won't show you yet, you know, I, I defined three values, R1, R1, R2, and R3, and I compute three sets of values, X1, X2, X3, and then, uh, then I plot them, okay? So what I've done here showed you what the equation looks like in MATLAB, okay? So ho hopefully you understand this dot thing, so why do I have a dot here? Um, because I want this to be a uh, scalar calculation and I want that to be a scalar calculation. It's not really required here, okay? Why is that? Oh, because that this R is a scalar to begin with, okay? All right, so, so what this thing does here is implements this equation. So you have one divided by, you see the parentheses, there's one, pr the parentheses when you code like this, you have to be careful they match up. So that first parentheses goes to that parentheses way over there, right? So this is 1 plus, so that's 1 plus, then you have 1 over x naught minus 1, that's that plot, that part, sorry. Multiply that e to the minus rt, okay? So that's how you implement that equation in MATLAB. So basically all you have to do to solve this problem is you have to define a vector t, just like I did a vector x in the previous problem. And then you have to calculate this thing, given that vector t, calculate vector x's for these three values and then plot them, okay? So now you just got to do it. Now this is where I just hang out, okay? So if you have some problem, you can, you can let me know. I think in the future when we do these MATLAB things, um, I'll ask the three undergraduate TA guys, they're actually guys and gals, to come in so that, it, you know, for example, so at some point we're going to, this, you shouldn't have a lot of trouble with this to be frank with you, but at some point we'll start doing things that are more complex. There might be like 10 people having a problem at the same time. It'd be kind of hard for me to deal with it, but um, so, and uh, just as a prelude, when you're done, it should look, some, look something like that, okay? So you can see what I've done is I've created three sets of, I've calculated x for the three values of r, I've plotted those versus t, 
I've labeled it, I've created a legend for the three lines. It's just like the other problem, except now you create plotting three things instead of two. It's a different equation, but so see how you can do. If you have a problem, let me know. Yeah. Why is there a dot after the one at the top? The dot after the one at top, because I'm I'm telling MATLAB, please do this calculation element by element. If you don't do this, it does a so-called matrix or vector calculation, which you guys don't know yet, but you will later in the class. So in order for MATLAB to know that you want to do, you want to calculate one value of x for every value of t, you have to put these dots in these two places. Otherwise, it's going to do a different calculation than the one you want. It's hard to explain now because we haven't talked about matrices and vector calculations yet in MATLAB. but. The default in MATLAB is it always wants to do vector and matrix calculations. You put the dot there to tell it, don't, no, no, don't do what you normally do. Do it element by element. For each element of T, calculate an element of X, or, yeah, in this case, X. So by the way, I should tell you, the, the easiest way to do a, c a problem like this is, first of all, at the command line, you know, the double prompt. So the first thing I do is I, I just say, I'm defining a variable called x0 to be 0 0.1, okay? And then I might say, I'm going to define a variable R1 to be, what are my choices? 0 0.5. You see, the equation I have written up there assumes that you've already defined R. Otherwise, you're going to get an error. It's going to say, what's R? I've never heard of R before. Okay. So you have to define an X0 and an R. I called it R1, and I would put R1 in the equation because I want to, for R1, I want to calculate an X1. For R2, I calculate X2. And X3 for an R3. So you, ha you, have, to c you have to create the vector T, remember? Right? Just create the vector T just like I created the vector X in the last problem. Should we put the apostrophe after the function so it gives it a list of you? I put the semicolon after it because, yeah, is that what you mean? Well, yeah, I did the semicolon and then another You did, it created it. Look in, look in the upper right hand corner. Is that right? Oh, the, yeah. yeah. So you, what you did is you oh, suppressed the output. So it created it. You decided, I don't want to see it printed to the screen. Should I click on that? And open it or? No. Now you can just plot it. Yeah, so you can, you, oh, right. yeah, yeah. Because you don't want to see it, because what are you going to do with 100 elements printed to your screen? Like, right. yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what did you define T to be? I defined it as a measure. How many elements? Okay. Yeah. So that's fine. You can see if you if you made it, you can see how you get these kinks. Because the, what MATLAB does is it just connects the points.